you never know what you're gonna find up here in the attic although masks spooky stuff and junk are all pretty safe bets really but anyway hello and welcome back to the mask fan attic once again tonight's mask takes us back well uh first to 1981 back in the days when they still made great uh, horror movies for television wow back in the day they used to make fabulous horror movies for television we had things like salem's lot and um uh, the night stalker and the norless tapes and all these great scary uh shows and then in 1981 we had dark night of the scarecrow which i think is still one of the best made for tv horror stories ever if you haven't seen dark night of the scarecrow from 1981 for badness sake rush right out and get yourself a copy on uh, dvd or some format uh, because it's a fantastically good little movie and no big special effects no cgi straw or anything like that just a good actors and a good script and a good uh, a good job of directing a good director working with good people to make a good scary movie in fact dark knight of the scarecrow is such a good movie i don't know why it didn't turn into one of those uh, perennials you know like every year at christmas time they show uh, the classic christmas tv specials like the animated grinch who stole christmas and rudolph and all that stuff it seems to me dark knight of the scarecrow deserved to be in that caliber but for halloween you know in that um that situation but but every Halloween you would think they would get that movie out and show it but uh, they don't always do that but anyway great movie and even though the movie did come out in 1981 it took until about 2008 for anybody to uh, get interested in doing a mask of the scarecrow from Dark Knight of the Scarecrow now um, not a lot of room back here in the corner of the attic. Do you notice? We're going to knock the set apart here. But you don't care because what you need to know is that this mask was uh, commissioned by the uh, uh, writer of the film who wrote the story and the script, J.D. Fagelson. And Mr. Fagelson uh, commissioned this mask in 2008-2009, uh, that period. It was sculpted by the amazingly talented Jeremy Barr, who's done all kinds of wonderful masks for uh, his own company which was featured creatures for some years and lots of masks for uh, trick-or-treat studios and others and uh, Jeremy sculpted this excellent excellent likeness now these sold for about uh, 250 bucks initially and then there was a, a special run of them that sold for 200 that were made available at horror hound weekend conventions and this particular one, I, I don't know if you can see this, but it is signed in there. It's number seven, and it says J.D. Fagelson. Can you see that? You probably can't see it. Take my word for it. It's number seven, signed by J.D. Fagelson. Gosh, who made the masks, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked that. They were uh, cast up and painted and finished very nicely, I might add, with these little bits of, of straw sticking out. Uh, by none other than a guy named Aaron Crowell, who is the mangling editor. Managing or mangling? Oh, not much difference, really. Some sort of editor, you know. Uh, managing uh, editor and uh, co-creator co uh, of Horror Hound Magazine and Horror Hound Weekend Conventions. He did the casting and painting uh, chores on the 30 or so masks in this particular series. And as you can see, both the sculpting and the paintwork really work uh, hard and successfully I think to sell it on the idea that what you're seeing isn't really rubber but is a dusty old woven fabric with a piece of old dirty rope from out on the farm around the neck very realistic looking uh, scarecrow mask and very spooky and and uh, very effective I think and again I love that movie so I especially felt like oh yeah I gotta have a mask of this guy now since that time another version has been offered by trick-or-treat studios theirs is great too they're both excellent masks uh, different sculptures they have a little bit of a different look to them but of course they're pretty similar because they're two different versions of the same character which is to say they both look like a canvas sack for a head and the uh, big three round holes that give him the bowling ball face that he has. So you, you see that in both of them. I recommend them both because they're both awesome. But uh, this one, again sculpted by Jeremy Bohr, produced in a very, very small limited quantity 
by uh, Aaron Crowell of Horror Hound Magazine and Horror Hound Weekend Infamy. And, uh, you know, signed, some of them signed at the conventions by Mr. Fagelson, writer of the excellent Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. And when you're looking for Dark Knight of the Scarecrow because you go, oh, I saw the guy on uh, in the attic with those videos and masks and he told me to see this movie called Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, be careful you get the one called Dark Knight of the Scarecrow and don't get the one just called Knight of the Scarecrow because... Uh, you, if you make that mistake and you get the movie that's just Night of the Scarecrow, you're going to hate me. I don't need anybody else hating me, see? So be sure you get the 1981 Dark Night of the Scarecrow. Uh, good scary movie made for TV, good Halloween movie to watch, and inspiration for two now very cool and collectible masks. And until next time, remember, a sandwich is a sandwich, but a manwitch is a warlock.